identified as having smashed a chair leg into the back of an op's head, and said he was said to have pounded a man's head repeatedly with a hammer. This You guys know I'm drinking that? Because you're about to know the whole history about Aussies drew bloody gang war. 1 4 versus the 25th district, 21 district. Hey, what's up, guys? Your boy Franklin Tony back again with another reaction video of the day. Today, as you guys know, we're going to be reacting to what really started with us with 1 4 and 24 district. Like, what started the whole beef and everything. So, we're going to learn about that. You know, I don't really know much about them. So, you know what I'm saying? I, I'm, I'm getting to know them, I'm getting to know them, I'm getting to know them, but it is what it is. Anyways, if you guys are new, do not forget to hit that subscribe button. Make sure you guys also like the video. Just give me share so the video, share, subscribe, and turn that notification. Let's get to 4,000 subscribers before the end of March. I really, really appreciate that. I appreciate that if you guys subscribe to my channel and turn on the post notification. And let's get to 50 likes on this video. I really, really appreciate if you could, if you could do that. And yeah, without saying too much. Let's run to the video, yeah? Let's, let's, let's see what we've got going on. Let's see, let's see. If you hear the phrase World Day Booting in Australia, I tend to think of this. Because on the streets of Sydney, Australian drillers, much like their British counterparts, tend to have a bit of trouble. So what do you guys think? Do you guys think... Do you guys think Australia... Oh! Oh! Do you guys think Australian drill happened before UK drill? Or it's been there from time? getting their hands on firearms. Meaning that modern day Aussie drillers have to rely on their shanks and shivs to get the job done. Now, I've not yet had the privilege of visiting Australia myself, and I know it's easy to assume that Australia land is nothing more than cans of fosters, kangaroos in pouches, and shrimps on barbies. But today, I'm here to tell you that in the west of Sydney, it's more foster homes, shanks in pouches, and barbecue pokers headed straight for your fucking eyeballs. That's mad. Yes, historic. So they have a lot of foster foster homes in Australia. Wow, why is that? Why is that? Someone let me know. Why is that? Why do they have a lot of foster homes in in Australia? Someone let me know. Clearly, Australia has been home to a host of gangsters far beyond the amusing antics of Chopper Reed. In fact, gangsters from Southeast Asia, China, and Vietnam have all had a presence in the country since the formation of the lucrative Aussie drug markets in the 1980s. Gang warfare that actually culminated in the assassination of the anti-drug politician in Australia, John Newman. And then, of course, you've got your biker or bikey gangs, two-wheeled outlaws like the Banditos. Hells Angels or Gypsy Jokers, the likes of whom were truly wild, being responsible oh. for some of the most insane instances of Aussie street violence, including a 1984 shootout that left seven people dead, known as the Milpera Massacre. It was actually <gasps> that incident. How does, an, uh, how does the up gang kill seven people in one night? That's a whole squad. Dude. That's more than a squad they, they wiped out. Damn! itself that even led to stricter gun laws in New South Wales. But you know your boy TLR is a thriller at heart. So in today's video, we're going to be focusing on the Aussie youth gangs who would eventually move on from doing dirt in the street to pioneer the Aussie drill music movement. Specifically, we're going to be looking at the youth gangs in Sydney's Inner West and Greater West, whose smaller sets would battle it out on the streets of Sydney for years before eventually spawning two of the most exciting Aussie drill crews in history. 1-4 hailing out of the Greater West and 21 District hailing from the Inner West. These specific Whoa. crews were made up of the rapping young men who had emerged and survived the dangerous skirmish oh but that's the thing guys wait one four wait one four is made in 2014 wow is between the Inner West and the Greater West gangs, with a significant number of the lads from both of these groups being Pacific Islanders which if you didn't know so guys let me know where where's EY on where's EY if uh, so where's EY Hunter from so let me know where I thought all this time, I thought it was from 21 District. So let me know, where is he from? Those to an ethnic group of people hailing from around 80 different islands in the Western Pacific, many of whom's ancestors were brought to Australia in the 19th century to work in sugar fields. With the subsequent generation of young Pacific Islanders going on to be historically profiled by Australia's police, as well as Asian immigrants mainly based on assumptions and stereotypes derived from the criminal gangs that had come overseas to Australia. So growing up as a young islander in Australia, much like marginalized groups in the US or the UK, that would make you a target for police brutality. Damn. With members of 
of 1-4 even recounting being beaten black and blue by the cops as early as age 14. In fact, the underrepresentation of Pacific Islanders in Aussie media plays a big part in making Aussie drill so exciting. Because until the Aussie drillers made it cool, these young men from these unique backgrounds were extremely underrepresented in Aussie media. You know, unless you count the brown face wearing character from Summer Heights High, Jonah from Tonga. Cringe. Anywho, much like we've seen in the hoods of Chicago, London, and New York all around the world, at a certain point, these underrepresented gangsters from the hood managed to come up with a cohesive group identity. And once we saw people coming out of these situations getting good at rapping, we began to see Aussie gang and street culture flourish, getting a voice through music. And from observing the likes of 1-4 and 21 District, even us UK drillers have been delighted to learn some of the colourful slang of these Sydney savages. I mean, some of the best exports so, from Australia- So what I'm hearing is- what I'm hearing is, what do you call it? Um, one four and twenty one. This is they're from. They're both from Sydney. Or where, 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 where are they both from? Australia these days are delightful insults for your ops, like the word gronk. But uh, around here. A real filthy word to call your enemies like dogs and gronks, you know what I mean? You've also got the phrase lads, which unlike in England where it tends to mean obnoxious university sports team wanker, in Aussie street culture lads or eshes formally refers to a persecuted Australian lad hailing from the hood. Most likely to be seen wearing sportswear, being working class and potentially up to no good. This is more akin to a chav in the- What in the hell? <laughs> bro, they literally- Bro, they literally made the whole sign saying No one is wearing this. They said no lads or lad clothing. So imagine making a sign saying no tech places, no Nike, Nike dunks, no hats, no, none of that allowed in a certain area, in a certain point. Like, well, it's never that deep. Why are they making signs? <laughs> or Eshes, formerly refers to a persecuted Australian lad hailing from the hood. Most likely to be seen wearing sportswear, being working class and potentially up to no good. This is more akin to a chav in the UK, or perhaps at a stretch what the Americans might call <clears throat> trailer trash. And of course you've got urchers, which is essentially a lad who is out to make money illegally or by any means necessary. Hell, we all know what it feels like just to be a young lad trying to urch a little money, doesn't matter where you're from in the world. So lads, let's take a look-see at some of the little urchers who are making a few Aussie dollars out of this drill business. But first, a word from our sponsor. Bruh, in the beginning, I don't I don't want to know your sponsor. That is good. Aussie street gang. Like I, I don't want to know your sponsor. Based in Sydney's Greater West, with a particular presence. Bro, in if you guys want, bro, if you guys want to use few more, don't, you, bro. If to be honest, bro, at this point, just, just use our uh, what do you call it? Can no, not even Canva. Um. What's that other uh, Is it Cap? Yeah, Cap. Could just use Cap Cod, bro. In Mount Druitt, also known as Mountie or Mountie County, with the collection of numerous street crews coming from this area, sometimes being referred to as the Mountie County Coalition. The what makes us a dual group is that we actually do what we rap about. And through its home, you know, yeah, it's a big place. It's the trenches. And it's worth pointing out, as it's often the case with these stories, Mountie County is indeed the suburb of Sydney with the highest amount of gun crime. But it's from this collection of Street County is indeed the suburb of Sydney with the highest amount of gun crime. But it's from this collection of street lads repping NF14 that spawned the groundbreaking Aussie drill crew 1-4. And while Aussie rappers were already kind of doing bits in their native country in the 2000s in the form of lad rap, it seems plainly obvious that over the past few years, mainly out of sheer high quality music and frequent output, that 1-4 have frankly managed to become the most significant and successful rap-based movement to ever come out of Australia. The main members of 1-4 include JMs, Lex, YP, Spenny, and Selly. And because- Yeah, the only, the, only, the only people I know from 1-4 to become the most significant and successful rap-based movement to ever come out of Australia. The main members of 1-4- Do maybe I only recognize from 1-4 is JMs? I know Lex, I, I can't remember YP. And I know Spenny. I know Spenny. I don't know this too. I don't know. I don't. I don't know YP four and Selly fourteen. Four include JMs, Lex, YP, Spenny, and Selly. And because one four are from Mount Druitt or Mountie County, which is in a twenty seven postcode, they're known to frequently throw up and shout out the twenty seven number. With numerous lyrics from one four suggesting they're down to ride for that two double seven. Oh, from twenty seventeen, one four burst onto the scene with their track "Ready for War," heavily inspired by "Call Me a Spartan" by the Harlem Spartans. That was followed up by the track "What You Know," which featured a gang of Aussie lads that were so menacing I nearly did the dash from my computer screen just. 
watching it. Hey, when you drill this hard, ain't no one gonna tell you how to use stairs properly. So since they <laughs> burst onto the scene and introduced their native country to the booming hard sounds of UK and New York drill, 1-4 have essentially taken over and become the pioneers of the entire Aussie drill movement. Again, with a lot of their appeal essentially deriving from the fact that they were the first crew of Pacific Islanders to rap proudly about their lives in their native Aussie accent. Wow, that's mad. So they were actually the first people, that's crazy. And I gotta say, there's just something about hearing that Aussie accent over a hard UK drill beat that just sounds so cold. But it wasn't just their music that was pioneering, because they were also using their music videos to introduce the Aussie public to their slick street fashion style too. With a lot of their music videos around this time essentially looking like adverts for the Foot Locker prison wrench. So with all of these lads out here rocking more menacing sportswear than a Sports Direct jungle sale, 1-4 with their unique sound and Eche fashion style that hadn't been seen by the streets before, 1-4 quickly became the coolest thing going, proving to other disadvantaged a young man from the same areas, but there is indeed another way to make it out of these streets. So from here, One Fall's Fair sound enough. continued to progress, and they would go on to drop other big releases like the track Shanks and Ships, a song and video which was hailed by many as potentially the first glimpse that the public had truly gotten of real life for lads on the streets. Wait, but did this Shanks and Ships get taken down from YouTube? This, they did not get taken down from YouTube. I thought it got taken down. Of the Greater West. The first track they put out, the Shanks and Ships. No one had seen anything like that in Australia. No one had seen young islanders or young ethnics in general represent their experience of the street. And Shanks and Shivs was followed by even more bangers like The Message, Spot the Difference and Lads in the Hood. And at a certain point, 1-4's unique style of Aussie accented drilling would capture the attention of drill and rap reaction channels all over the world, setting them up nicely for viral success. I never knew those drillers in Australia. I didn't know that exists over there. Who did he not beef from? The sports I'm fighters and that. Eventually, off the back of all of this energy, 1 4 would bang themselves some mainstream success with the song in the beginning, getting 1 million views on YouTube in the first 48 hours and going number 39 on the Aussie charts. 1 million views in 38 hours. That's not bad. That's not bad for like their, their upcoming. And from here, they were on a roll, dropping numerous follow up songs which would hit the charts. Like Welcome to Prison, Say It Again with Big ASAP, ASAP Berg, their emotional love letter to Mountie County, Home and Away, and the more pop leaning radio hit My City, featuring fellow rapping Aussie twink, The Kid Leroy. Basically, you'd be lying if you said that 1 4 didn't single handedly put drilling at the forefront of Aussie music and rap culture. But of course, when you're creating a successful scene like this completely from scratch, it doesn't take long for other people to see what's going on going on and try and get in on your track. And while their musical legacy is much less well established than One Force, it would be a travesty to overlook the musical development of their most hated ops, the Inner West 21 District. 21 District refers to both a coalition of street gangs in the inner west of Sydney, as well as an Aussie drill music group made up of members coming out of these areas. Their name actually comes from postcodes in Sydney that start with 21, including Guildford 2161, which was actually home of the first KFC in Australia, thanks Wikipedia, Marylands 2160, Blacktown 2148, Smithfield 2164, and Cabramatta 2166. Sometimes this coalition of street crews is referred to as the and Cabramatta 21. Five, five cities. Awkward 21. What for is beefing four, five cities? Five districts. What for is beefing five districts? 66. Sometimes this coalition of street no groups is referred to as the Inner West Brotherhood. Furthermore, subgroups exist as part of this coalition, such as G40, hailing from Guildford 2161. In fact, G40 has actually even been shouted out in 21 Districts music, and it's also worth mentioning that as part of the Inner West Coalition, other groups like 3T exist who have apparently even been rapping all the way back to the 2000s, and would even be out here making diss tracks to their Greater West Ops in 2010 before the Aussie Drill movement took off and 1-4 became the big dogs in the game. The reality is that the rise of 21 District, the rapping crew, is intrinsically linked to 1-4's rise because 21 District's breakout track, The Reply, is itself a direct response to 1-4's track, The Message, which actually included a diss referring to a murdered 21 District member. In fact, the feud between these two crews and their related coalition of gangs permeates the music on both sides with numerous lyrics from 21 District's The Reply referring to riding out on the ops. And the same can be said for 21 District's second biggest track, Still Here, featuring numerous references to attempting to drill it on the other side. To be fair, 21 District's rap unit haven't quite reached the level of success that 1-4 have pioneering the sound, but they- That's what I'm saying, like, I haven't really heard of, like, 21 District. Like, I've heard of them, but I don't know if I reacted to one of their songs. I don't remember. I know AY Untra, though. I know AY Untra. 
I know. I remember. I remember a one hundred and one four. That those are the only people I remember. But I don't. I don't think I really reacted to twenty one district. Comment down in the comment section. Let me know. Let me know the. Let me if you guys are like listening to twenty one district. Let me know the best song that they have out that should react to down in the comment section. Has certainly shown a great deal of promise and deserve a lot of respect. The star members of 21 District's rapping crew include Mac 11, Ron Gotti, Jay Lex, A1, and Malik. So now you know the crews, the music they make, and the sides they rep. Now we can take a closer look at some of the wild incidents that have gone down on the streets of Sydney between these two warring groups of lads. Just like we've seen with the gangs of Chicago and London, often the origins of these deadly gang feuds are as simple as teenage schoolyard scraps, which unfortunately, as members get older, escalate into shootings and stabbings, as made clear by JMs from 1-4. Clearly, tit-for-tat violence has been going on in Sydney's inner and greater west for decades, so we can't necessarily trace back every single incident that's gone on between these two groups of lads. But what we can do is take a closer look at some specific high-profile incidents that have made significant contributions to the beef and the music between 21 districts. And one four. An early one was a 2011 incident at a Westfield shopping centre where apparently members from Inner West's G40 had planned a 100 man deep fight with their ops BYOW. Bring your 100 men. 100 men. Where are you guys getting 100 men from? Where are you guys getting 100 men from? That's mad. From weapons. Now, this skirmish was being arranged on Facebook of all places, and it's no surprise then that eventually the cops caught wind of it and were able to arrive at the scene just after things had kicked off, arresting 13 people at the scene and recovering numerous homemade weapons and baseball bats. Police have warned they'll be making dozens more arrests after a mass brawl at a shopping centre in Sydney's west. Two gangs armed with homemade weapons stormed Westfield's Mount Druid shopping centre last night after pre-arranging the fight on Facebook. Fighting broke out at the Mount Druid station after one group got off a train and were met by the other, all of Pacific Island origin. Before long, a wild melee involving up to a hundred spilled through the doors of the Westfield shopping centre. Thirteen arrested, including four juveniles, police expect to make more arrests. At a certain point, these organised brawls escalated to stabbings and shootings. In April 2012, five drive-by shootings were reported in Sydney in a 48-hour space, with these taking place around North Mead in the Greater West, with the audio from the news report of those drive-by shootings being used many years later as the intro for 21 District Track the Reply. Now, Sydney police say there were five drive-by shootings in the city overnight. Our reporter Jason Nom joins us from North Mead in the city's five west. Um, so, five shootings within uh, four and a half hours, um, yet, you know, it just the spate of shootings just don't seem to be ending. From here, things were not sweet in the years that followed. People have been found beaten to death in Mount Druitt as early as 2015, with it yeah. having been suggested on social media that the man killed was indeed NF14, with the killer fleeing and getting the train to Blacktown, 2148. Young man has been murdered in Sydney's west overnight. His body was yeah. found sprawled on a footpath at Mount Druitt shortly after midnight. Very large crime scene. Detectives say that they believe the killer and maybe others involved boarded a train at Mount Druitt poli Police Station, or Mount Druitt Train Station rather, boarded a train to Blacktown and- Where is Blacktown guys? Someone let me know that country. So where is Blacktown? Where's that? That is where they arrested an 18 year old man at around 2.30 this morning. And the beef between these two sets eventually did make its way to music far before Aussie Drill had developed its sound. There's examples in 2016 with rappers from NF14 dissing the Inner West rapping over the beat to mob deep shook ones. And over on the Inner West side, you've got the likes of 3T dropping disses on the Greater West too. So while these mini music beefs were occurring, this was the same year that the police were investigating a savage beating in Mount Druitt where a 17 year old was beaten unconscious by a gang of armed thugs. An incident which like many of the ones I'm about to discuss was spectacularly on camera, but it's far too violent to show you without getting demonetized. You're gonna have to do your homework if you want to see that grisly shit. Anywho, at this point, the cops begun to single out the gangs in Mount Druitt as being completely out of control, suggesting frequent shootings in the area as well as fist fights that were being uploaded to YouTube were contributing to a spike of gang activity in the area. Meanwhile, by 2018, One Four were beginning to make waves in music for the first time in Aussie Drill, providing a template of a legal route through music away from the streets. However, these G's taking music seriously did not stop the bloodshed on the streets, as this feud would soon turn into a very public tragedy. When in 2018, we saw the murder of 20 year old Tino Henry, allegedly from the inner west with ties to 21 district. 20 year old Tino Henry had the world at his feet, but in the early hours of this morning, his- Bruh, what did this camp say? I repeat all these souls that were lost though. I repeat all these souls, but what did this camp say from acting guy, 
they jump on road, they jump in zoots. Then their mom hops on the news and told the whole world there was a good youth. And why, does, why does the news say all this? Like, first had the bright future. I don't. I don't even know if these guys were like doing drill or anything or like they were just innocent civilians. But I'm just saying. Like drill rappers say, you live by the gun, you die by the gun. You live by the sword, you die by the sword. Dave said, don't get caught by the sword that you used to shine. Don't get killed by the sword you used to shine. I don't think. Promising young. Well, I repeat to this man that died though. I repeat to these guys though. Life ended abruptly. In this alleyway off Fitzsimmons Street in Parramatta, he was fatally stabbed in the chest. This incident sparked Yo. a wave of violence between the groups, which was only inflamed further by 1-4 going on to drop lyrics, directly disrespecting their fallen op. Naturally, all of this and the incidents that followed would provoke a strong response from the police of Sydney, but what couldn't be predicted is just how hard they would come at these crews, ultimately taking several of their key members off the streets with hard sentences, as well as attacking their legitimate business business of making money through music. The One four just off the cusp of mainstream industry success in music would unfortunately end up losing several members over a 2018 fight. In July, months before the deadly stabbing of Tino Henry, a huge brawl took place at Rooty Hill Gaming Lounge Carousel Inn. This involved Lex from 1-4, who had allegedly been kicked out of the lounge over a drunken row over a machine. Now, in what little defense I can offer to Lex, it had been reported that racial slurs had been thrown during this argument, but who knows what really went down. Whatever was said was clearly no good and retaliation was a must, with Lex coming back with YP and Selly from 1-4 armed with weapons. At this point, the lads proceeded to give a savage beatdown to several people in the lounge, all of which was caught extensively on camera Camera, another shocking scene that I sadly cannot show you on YouTube. But essentially, let I think I saw. I think I, I think I saw that. I think I saw that fight. I think someone posted it on TikTok. I can't remember. Beat a man to the ground, grabbing him by the hair and taunting him to his face. YP was identified as having smashed a chair leg into the back of an op's head, and Sally hey! was said to have pounded a man's head. Why did he smash the chair to the back of someone's Hey! identified as having smashed a chair leg into the back of an op's head and Selly was said to have pounded a man's head repeatedly with a hammer. This vicious attack apparently leaving and Selly was said to have pounded a man's head repeatedly with a hammer. This vicious attack with a ha How you are, do I even have a hammer on you? This nigga just has this guy what do you have a hammer on you? Apparently leaving one of the victims unable to feel part of their face. One four gave these guys the little Wayne and Jewels treatment for God's sake. With all this caught on camera, it's no surprise that these lads ended up in court sharpish, without a chair leg to stand on or swing at the judge's head. Lex ultimately got slapped with or sharpish, without a chair leg to stand on or swing at the judge's head. Lex ultimately got slapped with four and a half years for instigating the fight. YP got four years for swinging the chair leg, and I assume also leaving a very unsafe three-legged chair out there for one of his ops to sit down and fall off of. But it was Selly who got the worst of it for whiling out with that hammer, with the judge dishing out a hefty 10-year sentence. This was a devastating blow no. for 1-4 for as a cohesive group as well as their business, meaning that star members' appearances on songs would be limited to jailhouse phone calls like we saw at the start of the track Welcome to Prison. Ex okay, so so it, okay, so it explains why I, I haven't seen Sally 14. I know I've seen I've seen legs. Why be 14 though? I don't know it, I, I can't remember. But it explains it. These two guys to jailhouse phone calls like we saw at the start of the track Welcome to Prison. We're going to this last year, Alexi, you know? We're going to be missing for a little bit, but it is what it is. Alexi, come. Yeah, what's good? It's double K. And just like we saw around the violent summer of 2018 in UK Drill, all of the goings on in the street would lead to huge scrutiny by the police, who would quickly crack down on both the illegal violence and the legitimate music business. In 2019, 1-4 began to have their shows cancelled by the police, with it being claimed that the cops were pressuring venues not to host these Aussie drillers. 1-4 has suggested that the cops were really just trying to shut down their only route to making legal money. And over on the 21 district side, they were seeing similar problems. And despite trying to make it clear with public statements saying that they're not 
criminals and that the rapping crew is no longer involved in crime, that hasn't stopped the police from shutting down their shows and video shoots too, as they explained in this statement. But while the cops were shutting down their legitimate businesses, since the killing of Tino, skirmishes were continuing in the streets. Another incident popped off where there were numerous drive-by shootings in a 48-hour period, with speculation that the homes of rival members were targeted. Within only a month of these shootings, 21 District had released their song The Reply, clapping back at 1-4 who had dissed Fallen Tino on their track The Message, starting that song off with audio from the news report about the 2012 shooting situation, which was very similar, which may suggest that these are all somehow linked. So clearly the beef was publicly active well into 2019, when we would see the likes of Spinning from 1-4 lurking in the ops turf of Guildford on Snapchat. Look where Spinning's at tonight. <laughs> Aha, uh -huh. where is they all gone missing? Bro, now 21 dish. Bro, this guy is spending his. Bro, I saw so spending is a funny guy. This man say ha ha. Dark at night, a man's alone. This guy wants to get popped. Dicky pussies. Fuck this. They all gone missing. Now 21 dish, chicky pussies. Fucking shout out to Manny, I was there for 30 minutes, he didn't even come. Eventually, members would come face to face, leading to another mini fight outside the Westfield Paramet. Oh, I saw this one also, I've seen this video on Snapchat. I'm not on TikTok. In June 2019, where knives were pulled out in front of shocked members of the public, but thankfully, the group Parameta in June 2019, where knives were pulled out in front of shocked members of the public, but thankfully, the groups disbanded before things got serious. In the middle of a busy intersection outside Westfield Parramatta yesterday, men fight on as a crowd gathered before some of the men retreated to their car. Another man smashes the vehicle as it races around the corner. Apparently members from these groups would run into each other again later one evening at a hookah lounge in another spectacular fight where an insane amount of objects and projectiles were thrown. Detectives are investigating if the same men involved in the Parramatta incident were behind another fight at Auburn last night. Then the following month another big gang fight spilled into the streets of Sydney in July along with a clip shared by 21 members with the suggestion that 1-4 are quick to pull out knives in fight an apparent reference to the previous incident where a blade was pulled out at the Westfield fight. At this point, there are crews brawling publicly on the streets of Sydney nearly every week. And gang culture was permeating mainstream culture so much that the New South Wales police had to warn the National Rugby League to stop players throwing up gang signs on the pitch. But if it was bad enough, losing rapping men was one four to... Damn to stop players throwing up gang signs on the pitch. But if it was bad enough losing rapping members of 1-4 to prison when they could have been making legal money on the streets, it looked like the police were going hard at targeting the non-rapping street teams of the Greater West Gangsters with a very public arrest in 2019 of a supposedly high-ranking street figure. With this marking the beginning of a big crackdown on Aussie street crews, with the cops calling in Raptor 13, the Raptor Squad, or Strike Force Raptor, a squad of hardened Sydney cops famous for busting biker gangs. Raptor Squad is a bit of an unnecessarily menacing name, isn't it? Like, you're trying to catch some gangsters, not an army of pterodactyls. Anyway, <laughs> the Raptors vowed to shut down Sydney's drill crews and make every aspect of their lives uncomfortable. They directly claimed responsibility for cancelling the driller shows, and their sergeant said that they had planned to use more serious crime prevention orders, usually reserved for biker gangs or terry wrists, to shut down 1-4's activities. Thankfully today, 1-4 is still going strong, having recently dropped their Against All Odds EP, which was fire, despite being essentially banned from performing with the cops completely shutting down their national tour. Meanwhile, on the other side, 21 District have been less musically active, but off the strength of their early tracks, I've got absolutely no doubt that with a bit of effort and backing, they could be on top musically too, if they wanted to. Meanwhile, things are still going on on the streets. In July 2020, the news were reporting on a hammer attack linked to gangs from the Inner West, where rival members were forced on camera by members from the Inner West to throw up 21 okay, gangs. Okay, okay, this video was made, this video was made two years ago. We had that, they've done mad, they've done mad videos since 20... 2018, I think that's when this guy, 2019 or 2018, whenever this guy recorded, they've done mad videos, videos since then. ...signs and kiss their feet. Look, the thing that made people love Aussie Drill really is the music, not the antics or the violence. A lot of people have loved One Four's music without even understanding the true context of what these guys have gone through. So I really hope that going forward- That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. I don't feel like Drew Song promotes gang violence, right? I feel like People who listen to those songs, it's like, it's like, you listen to Justin Bieber, you listen to Ed Sheeran, you listen to all these people because what, you like the song, you don't care, you don't even know if they're talking, who they're talking about, you don't care if they're talking about like one female behind, like if you, a female that hurt them, nothing like, you don't care, you just want to listen to the song and feel good, you want your adrenaline to keep pumping, that's what he's saying, that's what, that's, that's, that's what, that's how it is, listen to Justin Bieber, Ed Sheeran, all these people. 
The, like they shouldn't be saying the same thing about you listening to Drew, you listen to Suspect, you listen to Chinks, you listen to CB, you listen to Yanko, you listen to Crankface, you listen to Zone 2, you listen to Moscow, you listen to Aussie, they, and then they say it's that what they're rapping about is causing violence. They're rapping about what they've gone through or what they do. That's their own that's their own business. It's not promoting any any more gang violence. It's not promoting people people listen to the song and say Oh damn, this is a good song. I like the lyrics. Oh, he, he's a very realist. He can, he can, he can, he, 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 he can, he can rap. I like this guy. I like this guy. That's what people say. That's if no one's going to be, oh, oh, he's talking about shanking somebody. Oh, I want to go shank someone. No, 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 no. Only uh, the people that do that are like, maybe they're mentally tapped upstairs. But regardless, nah, it's just, it's just, it's just a song. It's about your life. You rap about, you, like, why do you want them to make cap rap? They rap about their life and what they, what they feel like, boy. It is what it is. We hear a lot more music from both sides and less activity in the street. There's a lot of overlap between the Aussie and the UK drill movements. And if there's anything to learn from what we've got going on here, it's that eventually with enough mainstream success, you can get the cops off your back, stack that legal money, and get far away from the tough environment that made you. I hope that happens because I love 1-4 and 21 District's music, and I want to see them both flourish. Hope you enjoyed learning more about the background of Aussie drill music. I certainly enjoyed listening to it and making this for you. Appreciate you watching this. Shout out to all of the sponsors, and if you like the video, make sure you like, subscribe, and comment below. Gang, I love you all. Till next time, it's your boy TLR. Peace out. Yeah, guys, if you guys enjoy my reaction video, make sure you guys like the video and subscribe down below and comment down below. But yeah, I already said what I wanted to say, you know, guys. I already said, said what I wanted to say. Drew Music is in, does not promote violence. It's just about like the expression of emotion. That's all I feel like it, yeah, but. Hey man, one one four. They're doing good right now. I can't lie. They're doing good right now for themselves. Twenty one district. I think I'm gonna to have to react to them. I think so. If you guys have any recommendation of twenty one district song, let me know down in the comment section below. I'll react to it. But yeah, I haven't really heard much from twenty one district. So yeah, it was this. Anyway, thank you guys for watching. Be your boy Frank Tony. To another reaction video. Don't forget to subscribe, hit the like button, and turn on the post notification. I really appreciate it. And I'll see you guys next time. Thank you for watching. Peace out. Toi, t'es moins affaire quand t'as son Du coup, j'la start une gueule son Vrai des shows, mais c'est des glaces sans CD Que j'la j'écoute pas leur son Touche à l'ami, j'évite le paradis On baisse ta mère et pour pas un radis Quand t'es masqué, plus de fesses à dix On les bandits, mais c'est des candies Elle fait la hell, mais elle a sur Oli Elle a en effet dans ses mains